Well, good evening, friends. Welcome to another Wednesday worship service. Glad that you've joined us tonight. In just a moment, the worship team is going to come out and lead us every, like they do every week in a few minutes of praise and worship. Then I'll come back. We're going to look into the Word together tonight just for a few minutes. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Oh, victory. 
Hey, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that time of worship. So we're going to jump into our study for tonight. We're going to be looking at three truths about God that we can learn from the story of Hagar. Now we'll get to who that is in just a couple of minutes if you're not sure. We know that recently the news has been filled with reports about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It seems as though for years and years, really decades, there has been a conflict between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Some today wonder, where did it all start? Well, the truth is, it started way back in the Old Testament, in the early part of the book of Genesis. And we find it's there that we find the roots of this ongoing conflict. And that leads us to our introduction of Hagar and the many lessons that we could learn from her story. Now, I know undoubtedly there may be some who will tune in and watch this, this show tonight, this broadcast, that are thinking or asking, who is Hagar? Well, in the book of Genesis, we read the story of Abraham, how God promised Abraham that through his seed, all the nations of the world would be blessed. We see that in Genesis 12. Then God promised Abraham and his wife, Sarah, to that they were gonna have a child, even in their old age. However, the story doesn't end with the promise and and their child, when he came eventually, unfortunately, Sarah didn't have the faith to trust in God in his timing for their circumstances or the birth of that son that was promised to them. See, Hagar was a, she was an Egyptian slave who was purchased by Abraham to serve his wife, Sarah. There's some reference to that in Genesis 16. So Hagar's story as a slave is filled with abandonment, abuse, and affliction. When Sarah was getting on in years, at the time that God made this promise and still had it born children to Abraham, she, she impulsively commanded Hagar to go to bed with her husband to become his wife of sorts. And so in that culture and at the time of Abraham and Sarah, this would have been totally acceptable by their culture. However, just because culture says something is fine doesn't mean that that's God's ideal or even that it has God's approval at any level. 
Well, after Abraham slept with Hagar, she became pregnant. And then she began to taunt her master, Sarah. Even though she was only a slave, she now had what Sarah wanted the very most, a child. Sarah became irate with Abraham and even more so with Hagar. Even though it was Sarah, Sarah's idea originally that they sleep together and that Hagar bear a son for him. Sarah blamed Abraham for her difficulties and then began mistreating Hagar. And as a result of that, Hagar ran away. She left to return home to Egypt. However, the scripture tells us in Genesis 16, the angel of the Lord found Hagar. Typically in the Old Testament, when you read the angel of the Lord, it's referring to the pre-incarnate Christ. That's another study for another time. Either way, in Hagar's misery, God met her and spoke to her because because he, he came and spoke to her, Hagar called the Lord, the God who sees me. What a beautiful thought. Later, after Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, she and her son were both sent away. However, once again, the Lord pursues her and her son. We'll read that account in Genesis 21. Now tucked away within this larger account are three life-changing truths about God that we can learn from the story of Hagar. The first of those lessons is this. The first of those truths about God is this. God sees and hears the forgotten. You see, God heard Hagar sobbing in the wilderness. We see that in Genesis 21. And he hears your cries, friends, as well. Sarah also felt forgotten. She felt as though God had not answered her prayers for a child. However, God had not forgotten It was just that his timetable was different, as it often is. He is the God who bends down and listens, to listen to every murmur and groan of the human heart. We read about that in Psalm 116. Friends, there may be times, the truth is, maybe even right now, that you feel forgotten. But let me assure you, let me assure you of this. God has not forgotten you. He sees He has seen every tear that you've cried. The psalmist tells us that God collects our tears in his bottle. Psalm 56. Strengthen your faith, friends. Strengthen your faith and dare to believe that God is listening. And in his perfect timing, he will answer you. He always answers. Not often as we want him to, but he always answers. Second lesson about God is God loves and pursues sinners. Often in church circles, we seem to think of insiders and outsiders, people of faith and those who have none. God, however, sees all humanity in terms of them needing a savior, and he passionately pursues all people. Think about Jesus. Jesus spent far much more time with sinners and the outcasts of society than he did with the religious. It's kind of a disturbing thought but also a reality check for those of us who are religious. Jesus spent time with those whom we might consider immoral. He had deep conversations with prostitutes and heathens, the bloody, the bruised, and the broken. All the outcasts of of society were inexplicitly drawn to Jesus, and he embraced them as they came. Hagar, well, she was an outcast. She was a slave and she was looked down on by both Abraham and Sarah because she was their slave. However, in God's eyes, she was precious and very much worth pursuing. As we look at the violence in the Gaza Strip today, there are many well-meaning Christians who are preaching that God's heart is with Israel. And it is, but God's heart is also for those on the other side. The truth is God values even the terrorists and he pursues them with a heart of love. We must remember, friends, as believers, that our first calling as people who love and follow Christ is to reflect his love to the entire world around us, even those we may consider to be enemies. God loved Hagar and he drew her to himself with a love that far exceeds any human love, and he still pursues sinners today. 
Now, the third truth that we learn about God from this story of Hagar is this. God gives grace, but he often allows the consequences of our sin to impact us and others going forward. Even though God's plan was to bless Isaac as the son of Abraham and Sarah, God tenderly cared for Ishmael, Hagar's son. When Abraham eventually sent Hagar and her son away, God met her once again in the desert. God promised that he would make Ishmael into a great nation. And then the scripture tells us God was with the boy. Genesis 12, uh, 21, verse 20. So while God redeems and restores our foolish mistakes and our lack of faith, there are often consequences that will continue to impact ourselves and others around us. Sarah's impulsive decision to act on God's behalf rather than trust him and his timing caused Hagar and Ishmael great pain. Beyond just them, her lack of faith has resulted in years, decades, centuries of conflict between Jews and Arabs. The impact of just one sin is often staggering. Sin is never committed in a vacuum. It is always, always affects other people, and it's far more reaching than we can ever imagine. From Ishmael came the Arab race. In fact, Muslims believe that Ishmael was the one whom Abraham offered up to the Lord on the altar. From Isaac's seed came the Jewish race. And as believers, we know that Isaac was offered on the altar at Moriah. And it's a beautiful picture of God offering up his only son on the cross of Calvary, the first glimpse of what would happen. However, this tension between Arabs and Israelis has never, ever diminished. Sarah's impulsive sin has caused generations of conflict. It's a good reminder to all of us, especially as believers, our sins are covered by the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. We are forgiven and we are set free. However, that does not mean the consequences of our sinful choices are automatically erased. So there's some implication for our lives today from Hagar's story. Let's touch on those a little bit. First, I think we need to consider, how's your faith? Think about it. How's your faith? Are you impatient, wondering if God has forgotten you? The reality is you aren't going to be a perfect as a believer. You're, you're going to make mistakes and you will occasionally sin. However, when you're on the brink of making a life altering choice, stop and consider. Think about it this way. Who will my decision impact? When you have sinned, stop again. Consider who got hurt because of my actions. And then confess to God and ask for his forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9 talks about that. And then take some steps to apologize and ask forgiveness and make amends with those who have been impacted by your sinful choices. And then we're going to talk about understand. Being a part, a person of, of faith is seeking to understand how God's plan is unfolding in the world around us. Make it your goal to understand what you're reading in the news. The conflict between the Arabs and Israelis is entrenched in, the, in rights to the land and religious rights. Those who are Arabs believe the promises of the land was given to Ishmael because he was Abraham's oldest son regardless of the fact that he was born to Hagar. Jews believe that the promise was given to Isaac because he was born of Sarah. So friends, we have to make it our goal, your goal, my goal, as, believer, as a believer in Christ, to research and fully understand how this conflict is rooted historically in the events of the Old Testament. Genesis 16 and 21. And then, and then we should pray. Exercise your faith always through prayer. Once you understand the nature of this age-old conflict, begin to pray and intercede, not only for the Jews, but also for the Arabs, that they will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ on both sides of that conflict. Jesus is presently doing miraculous things in both the Muslim world and the Jewish world. Rather than praying that we or Israel will win, why not pray that all would come to Christ? Mm, sounds like God's heart. Pray also for the Palestinian believers, those who are caught in the scuffle. 
We have missionaries that are working with and ministering to many Palestinians and Palestinian believers today who, who are asking believers in the West if we will pray for them. They are suffering and hurting like everybody else. And then praise. Finally, praise God by faith for his love, for his faithfulness in your life. Praise him that when you were far away, he pursued you. He sent someone to you with the good news. He saw your tears and he heard your cries. Praise him that you're alive at this moment in history. As we move ever closer to the end times and more and more of our attention will be drawn to the Middle East and the account of Hagar has perhaps never been more relevant than it is today in this 21st century. Praise God that he is still moving and working according to his plan and in his timing all around the world. As you consider the seemingly insignificant story of Hagar, ask God to open your heart to help you understand his ways more fully, more clearly. Remember this, God sees and hears the forgotten. He pursues every sinner Regardless of, of skin color or language or culture, he pursues every sinner as though we are always, and, and even though we are always forgiven of our sins, when we repent and confess them to him, there will be ongoing consequences. Ask him to create within you strong faith and a willingness to wait for his perfect timing in your life. When you feel impatient, remember this story of Hagar and ask God to strengthen your faith. So friends, I hope you've learned a little bit about Hagar tonight. Maybe you've learned a little bit more uh, of the significance of the conflict between the Arabs and the Jews. As we close in prayer tonight, we wanna pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalms calls us to do that for the peace and safety of Jerusalem, the people of the Israelis. Um, but we also wanna pray for the Palestinians, the Arabs that are in that region who uh, they've got this centuries old conflict going on, but, but their hearts are both Jews and Palestinians alike, Jews and Arabs alike, that their hearts would be open and their eyes would see Jesus for who he truly is. Because the, the truth is the only way there can be peace in that region is through Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for tonight. Uh, thank you for this, the lessons we can learn from the life of Hagar, the struggles of Hagar. And Lord, we pray tonight for the peace of Jerusalem, for the peace uh, and the safety of the people of Israel, your chosen people to bless the entire world through them. Lord, we also pray for the Arabs, the Palestinians in that region particularly. Um, Lord, as there is this ongoing centuries-long conflict uh, in our lifetime, decades-long conflict, we pray for peace and, and resolve in that conflict. God, I pray for both Jew and Arab alike that they would, their eyes would be opened, their hearts would be receptive to the true message of Christ, uh, King, of, King of heaven, Lord of lords, Son of God, Son of man, that they may come to know him as Lord and Savior, find repentance through him, find salvation and forgiveness. God, that you would move in the hearts of Jews and Arabs alike uh, use our missionaries, use us, Lord, to be a light in a darkened world. Thank you for your word and for your grace, Father, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Well, friends, thanks for tuning in tonight. Just a, again, a reminder, we have a Sunday morning service here, uh, Sunday school at nine o'clock, uh, live and in person for both kids and adults. Our morning service is at 10 o'clock. We run that live here in the auditorium. Also, we run a live stream on Facebook at 10 o'clock. And then we'll be back here again next Wednesday night with another uh, short Bible study, or pop, perhaps we'll have a testimony lined up by then, and we'll be able to share that. Either way, we'd love to see you Sunday or back here again next Wednesday night. Have a great night. I pray God's favor and blessing on you and yours. In Jesus' name, amen.